What is up people? Kubernetes is taking over the world and in today's video I'm going to help fast track your learning experience by showing you some of the basic concepts about how Kubernetes works so you can unleash the power of container orchestration. Let's go. Alright, so let's picture we have a traditional environment. We have a bunch of VMs. Now, in the tra traditional world, we would have to load balance all these five machines and manually deploy our applications to these machines. We would have to monitor the health of these machines and the status of the applications like restart and all these things that add operational overhead. Now, what Kubernetes does is it adds an API on top of these machines and abstracts them away so you don't have to manage them. It also has its own database where it stores the state of the world. So in Kubernetes world, VMs are also called nodes and they are monitored by Kubernetes. Now let's talk about deployments. Now Kubernetes has a concept of deployment and we describe our deployment using a YAML file. The deployment tells Kubernetes um, how we want to deploy how many replicas we want. Do we want to do a graceful rolling style deployment where we gracefully drain each of the existing pods and roll over without affecting the customer? Or do we just want to forcefully roll out duplicate sets of containers? So that's the deployment. The pod tells Kubernetes um, about what container image we want to deploy, what port we want to expose, the version of the image, um, and also the environment variables that we want to pass in. When we pass this, a this um, YAML file to the API server, three containers will be scheduled onto nodes that are schedulable. So these containers are now running on these nodes. Um, when one of the node dies, basically what Kubernetes will do is it will move that application or that pod onto another node that is healthy and schedulable and when that node recovers it'll simply become part of the compute pool so the applications can be deployed there again now at this point our pods um, cannot take traffic from the outside world and they are also not load balanced on the inside for internal traffic so for this we need a what's called a service object <laughs> Now services in the Kubernetes world basically describes how Kubernetes should deal with incoming traffic. Now traffic can either be internal, private, so container or pod to pod traffic. That is like one microservice calling another microservice. Or it can be public where you have a set of pods that get load balanced under a public IP and under a load balancer. Now firstly, let's assume our application is private so it's only accessible to apps in the environment when we pass this service um, yaml file to kubernetes api what it will do is it will create the service object which basically provides us with the private dns name and when we call that dns internally it will route traffic to one of our three applications so this means that other pods inside kubernetes can talk to our application now when we update our yaml file and we change our service to type load balancer and we pass that to the api we will get an, an um, update to that service happening now kubernetes is cloud native so what it will do is it will go to the underlying cloud provider doesn't matter whether it's microsoft azure google cloud aws digital ocean and more um, kubernetes will figure out where it's running it will go to that cloud provider and it will spin up a load balancer with a public ip so now we can have customers and external systems access our pods or applications via a public ip over a load balancer <laughs> Now there are some other basics as well. So Kubernetes also supports config maps and secrets. And config maps basically allows us to configure like JSON files, application settings, and any type of configuration files. We can mount those inside the application containers and Kubernetes does that for us automatically. Um, we can also have a secret type of object. And a secret is basically similar to a config map but it is where we store sensitive data so passwords and keys and the good thing about secrets is your operators or your sec ops 
can deploy these passwords and keys and developers simply reference to them by name inside the yaml file of a deployment or a pod spec so the developer doesn't have to know about the password but it can just reference and utilize the password kubernetes will then go and mount these secrets and config maps um, into the application when it deploys it now that is kubernetes basics 101 in a nutshell now i would highly recommend if you have docker on windows go and enable the kubernetes feature or on minikube if you have mac or um, linux and try out these api objects and deployment pods services config maps and secrets once you get the hang of these you can try out more advanced concepts and unleash the full power of kubernetes so i hope you all like this video smash that like button and subscribe button and let me know down in the comments what you'd like me to um, cover in future topics peace Guys.